55. Money Mississippi at his back, the murderous man found himself at the doorstep of that very cabin, deep in the backwoods of Tennessee. It was a dark night. All the leaves on the trees were turned up. A storm was brewing. And this man, he had no shelter from the weather. But after the bastard's part in the murder of that boy, what was a little breaking and entering? Or entering? As the door simply swung open with a As soon as he set his knapsack down, the winds picked up. The thunder, the lightning struck. Noah himself would have been frightened. <laughs> the cabin grew darker. An eerie chill made the hairs on the back of the traveler's neck begin to rise. To calm his nerves, he set about building a small fire with only some twigs and a match. Soon, the flames were sending shadows flickering along the walls. He took the only chair in the whole cabin over to the fire and sat down. He listened to the storm outside raging. It seemed to echo his feelings. As he sat, lost in thought, thinking about the winding, twisting, muddy Tallahatchie River, the traveler was unaware of a large black cat strolling out of the shadows. It was the size of a St. Bernard, and it seemed to just glide right into the flames, and it began to bat a coal back and forth, back and forth. The traveler rubbed his eyes. He blinked. But the cat, the creature, did not disappear. It took two well-placed steps towards the man and laid down at his feet. Wow. Wait until Emmett Till, Emmett Till, Emmett comes round. This had to be a figment of his imagination. This was his mind playing tricks on him again. Certainly no one in the backwoods of Tennessee knew about that nasty nigger who did the talking. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, ketchup. His counting was interrupted by a second, even larger cat. It was jet black, size of a lion. It seemed to bound towards the fire, jumping into the flames, snapping at the popping embers. Eventually, it grew tired of this game. What shall we do with him? The second cat asked the first. Well, we shall not do anything, Raoul, until Emmett comes. The second cat snarled and turned its bright yellow eyes on the traveler. The floorboards began to swim. Heart attack! The darkness collapsed, tightening his chest. Heart attack! His breath caught in his throat. Heart attack! Wait until Emmett Till, Emmett Till, Emmett comes. He tried to focus. I was thinking and thinking till there's nothing I can thunk. Breathing in the stink till finally I stunk. It was at that time I swear I lost my mind. I started making plans to kill my own kind. Started making plans to kill my own kind. What shall we do with you? directly behind the traveler's chair. Immediately the fog cleared, just like the night at the river, dumping the boy's 
broken body. Raul, we shall not do anything, Raul, until Emmett comes. The thing behind the chair laughed. The traveler's bones shook. In a flash, a third cat, if you could even call it that. Black is midnight. Black as the man's soul, black as the boy's lifeless eyes. It was the size of a bear. It leapt behind the chair, directly into the flames, and began chewing all of the embers, swallowing the remaining light. One. Two, three, four, five, six glowing <coughs> yellow eyes. Scratch. The door swung open. A flash of lightning illuminated the silhouette of the broken, battered, beautiful, black boy. Nobody heard the traveler scream. And that's the story of Wait Until Emmett Comes. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.